Hello, I'm Jill Stannard, naturopath and mentor, and today is Tuesday the 17th. I hope I got that. Yeah, Tuesday the 17th of March. You can lose track of time and dates when you work from home. Uh, today I want to talk about working from home because uh, this is something I know a little bit about. About six years ago I transitioned from having my own multidisciplinary clinic in Melbourne for a couple of years, oh, sorry, a couple of decades and uh, it was a, a small multi-clinic but only two consulting rooms. So. You know, at the most, there was only other one practitioner, one other practitioner there, their clients. Sometimes we were both so busy, we were like ships in the night and just kind of smiled and waved at each other. But it went a lot beyond that. Uh, there was a real community back on the fifth floor of the Manchester Unity Building in in Melbourne. Uh, in the end of, by the end of my time, it was all uh, jewellers actually and people involved in the jewellery trade. If you can hear something, that is a plane overhead. I am under one of the flight paths in Sydney and I'm wondering if there's gonna be a little bit less traffic and a little bit of uh, reduced noise in the inner west coming up. Anyway, I went from that environment and I realized it wasn't just my colleague and our clients, it wasn't just the friends and colleagues on the floor, it was the other businesses that I saw on a daily basis, the florist who I bought my, um, flowers from every Monday, the various places I have lunch, the various shopkeepers that I've interacted with on a regular basis. So when I moved to Sydney in 2014 and started a home-based business, actually it was in other rooms of the house. Um, hello Helen, I think, and hello Jane. It's nice talking to my friends here. So what I'm talking about is working from home. So. Uh, I, actually, I have actually worked from almost every room in this house. I'm very lucky I have um, scored the best room and the sunniest room and the biggest room. But it was a real wake up, working from home, losing those routines, losing those regular contacts with people. So I've had a, a, a number of uh, friends and colleagues on Facebook telling me that they're working from home at the moment. And I just thought I'd give a few tips working from home. So 90 plus percent of my work is online. And the first rule is uh, wear pants. Honestly, wear pants. Uh, footwear optional. Um, the best thing about working from home is these. Working, wearing a boots has revolutionized my life. When I do have face-to-face -face clients, I often say, oh no, I've got to, got to wear clothes today. Actually, what I mean is I've got to wear not Uggs or bare feet to work. But actually, you don't have to dress up like you're going to the office, but at least put on, I, I do like um, wearing clothes that I wear for work and changing clothes after work. So clothes do matter they actually can delineate the beginning and the end of your working days. I think routine is incredibly important. So what I learned really early on is I had to learn to leave the house. It was very, very easy to see my clients online, do some admin and look up and go, actually I've been home all day and I haven't left. Um, particularly, I, I referenced in the last video I made yesterday that uh, some of us who are a little bit prone to anxiety can get um, can go down the rabbit hole a little bit at times of increasing crisis. And what I've found that's been really important for me is not just going for a walk or two a day, but actually go for three, um, you know, morning, sometime during the day and before or after dinner. Whatever it is for you, it's exercise. I just had possibly my last one-on-one uh, -on -one yoga session for a little while. We've just paused it. I've got a great yoga teacher, Cindy, who uh, has a small baby. So she comes to work with me one-on-one -on -one and we've both agreed that it's time to pause it. So exercise, um, other outdoors or indoors, so those of us who are free to roam, definitely get outside, definitely walk, run, cycle, do what you want, spend some time in nature. If weather-wise or other reasons-wise you are confined to home more, my number one tip is put on your favourite, favourite, daggiest music to dance to. Um, 
ABBA, Marvin Gaye, whatever it is for you. I've really dated myself with those two references, but that's how it is. Uh, put it on as loud as you can to not piss off your neighbours and dance around the living room, the kitchen, every room in the house. A skipping rope is also a really handy thing if you've got enough space inside your house or in your backyard or in your laneway to skip. It really, it's really good intense bursts of uh, cardio. So if you're working from home and you're used to kind of having those coffee breaks or water cooler breaks and getting up and talking to your colleagues, maybe just step outside into a space that you can skip or turn on the music inside and dance, break your day up. So I found it was really important for me when I began working from home was having a routine and that routine is these are the workouts and these are the non-workouts and boy does that delineation get really, really fuzzy. It can get super, super fuzzy. I actually say for those who are getting used to or starting a new journey for however long of working from home, it's actually make sure you don't overwork. Look, I know there's lots of jokes that you're just going to spend all day watching Netflix. Probably what most of you are going to do is actually work more. You've got your commuter hours that you might start working because you're at home. There may be meetings at kind of odd times that you've got to be online for. But I've actually found that most people who work from home overwork. So think about what is a reasonable amount of work to get through in that day. Set that down. Maybe make a timetable and put your breaks in it and say, well, if I finish by three o'clock and I don't have an online meeting, actually, I've been working since seven, it's time to stop. Next tip is eat away from your computer, eat away from screens. Um, I know some people have got some really bad habits from their workplaces to do this, but the upside of working from home is you can have some really, really delicious and healthy food in your kitchen, in your backyard, wherever else. Uh, one of the things around food that actually I found quite important for me both when I worked in my Melbourne clinic and in my Sydney clinic is that uh, going out to support a local business and eating lunch has been actually quite important to break up my days. Sometimes it's the only thing that would get me out, the, out of the door. I'm really reconsidering when do we stop doing that but right now up to yesterday I was doing that but remember eat away from your desk apart from you don't want to and you don't want to put sticky drinks on your keyboards and all those sorts of things uh, okay other things to do yes I talked about estimating your workload not overworking I've got to keep saying that we're not actually a nation or a world of slackers we actually are prone to work so delineate that end of work time uh, have some screen free time. Now, I think this is the thing, uh, particularly for those who are self isolating or stuck home with kids because their kids got a runny nose and they're not allowed to go to school today, is perhaps have some dedicated times when you turn off your internet connection. I know that's hard with phones, computers, or other ways to connect, but actually have some dedicated non screen times. Do something manual. Manual means doing things with your hands whether it is craft, whether it's actually writing with a pen, whether it is um, uh, um, doing something sculptural, drawing, whether it is uh, cleaning. We could end up with a very clean home the more often you work from home. I know I certainly got into habit when I was a student that I always knew when it was exam and assignment time because boy, the amount of cakes and soups I would make was phenomenal. So, but do something with your hands, get away from your screens, make conscious downtime, read some books. And for those who got my newsletter, uh, yesterday also online are the articles that were in it. And um, I really think this is a good time to get reading actual books again. So have a project. So if, if you are going to be either self-isolated or working from home for a while, create some projects outside of your work time and out of your workspace. If you've got a garden, um, do some gardening. It's really, really good. Actually, the most important thing too is actually to have connection not just with other people in whatever form is safe for us at the moment uh, and animals. I'm still waiting for the therapy cat to wander in in the middle of a Facebook Live, but he's Seems to be timed with his big sleeps at the moment. 
but to connect with nature, connect with the earth. I think I've rabbited it on enough for today, but all going well, I will be back tomorrow at one o'clock Eastern, Australian Eastern sometime, uh, which is also 3 p.m. in New Zealand. And if you've got a question or a topic about health or lifestyle while living in interesting times, then please write a comment or send me a message. So be kind, be kind to yourself, be kind to those around you, be kind to your animals, and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day.